for today's video, I decided that I am going to send myself on a little geologic scavenger hunt. So I put together a list of some geologic features that I know are possible to find in my area that I know exist here, and I'm going to set a timer for myself for two hours to see how many of these features I can find in that time period. I know it's not possible for me to find every single one of these things in two hours because some of them are farther away from me, so I'm going to have to pick and choose of what things I can find and see how many I can check off the list. Do you hear that? That is a waterfall! <laughs> so at my first stop I saw a stream with a waterfall, and this was a great example of physical weathering, erosion, and transport. Physical weathering is the breakdown of the rock by the force of the water, turning it into sediment. And then erosion is the removal of the sediment from the rock, and then the water will transport that and eventually deposit it somewhere else. In this case, that's in river. I saw a waterfall here, which is also a feature that shows evidence of erosion in the past. This is a great example of turbulent flow as well, which I'll explain better in a later part of this video. I wish I could stay here longer because it's really beautiful, but I have to keep going and try to find more of my stuff on my list. At this stop, I also saw a sedimentary rock outcrop, and I saw examples of folding and rock fractures, as well as biological weathering from all those lichens that were all over the weathered rock surface. Look at this. Okay, now it's time to go to stop number two. Okay, I have 58 minutes and I got my peppermint mocha. Mmm, wow. At my next stop, I stopped at the Hudson River where I got a good view of the Catskill Mountains. The Catskills are part of a large delta of sediments that deposited off of huge mountains that used to be here millions of years ago. This is a coarsening upward sequence of sedimentary rocks, meaning fine-grained rocks are at the bottom and coarser-grained rocks like sandstone are at the top. The layers are mostly horizontal and were slowly eroded by mainly rivers over time to form the peaks that we see now. The Hudson River is actually an estuary since it flows two ways and connects to the Atlantic Ocean. And here you can also see evidence of physical weathering on the shores by wave action, as well as erosion and transport. The waters were especially full of sediment when I went here because of the recent storms and snowmelt. In the loose rocks on the shores of this park, there are also a lot of fossils visible, and these rocks are likely from the area, but they might not be the same exact ones as the bedrock at this location, but fossils like these are actually really common in the rocks in this area. On my way to the next stop, I also saw a lot of stone walls, which are actually really popular here in New York. These were built starting in the 1800s when people needed to get rocks out of their farmland, and this was more out of necessity to get the rocks out of the farmland rather than to build these fences. I also saw a lot more outcrops like this of sedimentary rock, very similar to stop number one, where you can see the slanted bedding from that regional tectonic stress millions of years ago. So these rock layers were once horizontal until all of that stress caused them to crumple up, basically. So I'm at a state historic site right now and I came here because there's a lot of building materials here that are made from rocks. So I'm gonna try to find that for my list and check that off. This estate was built in 1728, and I'm pretty sure that many parts have been renovated and added to over the years, but a lot of the structures and staircases and walls are composed of rocks that look a lot like the ones in those stone walls. It's likely that the building materials were sourced locally since there isn't really a shortage of these rocks around here. These are all sedimentary rocks that were likely deposited and broken up by the ice sheet that was here over 10,000 years ago, during the last ice age. Does that count as an island? I think I'm gonna check that off. <laughs> it's 12.51 and I don't really have much time left, but on my way home, I'm gonna stop at a few other places and I'm just gonna let that count. <laughs> I guess I can just decide that the coffee break doesn't count in the time. So 
So I'm at my last stop right now even though my time is technically over and I wanted to show you this one because it's a perfect example of laminar flow versus turbid flow. This is an example of laminar flow where you can see the water all moving in pretty much the same direction. A few ripples but pretty smooth and calm. This is usually associated with deeper channels compared to over there which is turbulent flow. This water is moving pretty chaotically in a bunch of different directions with rapids and lots of action. There are also a lot of rocks that are visible in the stream with the water bouncing over and around them, showing that the channel is much shallower here. Also found an example of float rock here. See, this is a piece of rock that has been um, weathered and eroded off of the bedrock, and now it's just kind of floating here, not in place. It's not connected to any piece of bedrock. So I ended up finding about 22 out of 53 of the items on my list. That's a little bit less than half of the items that I wrote down. And I think I did a pretty good job. I could have done a little bit better, but I'm pretty happy with the stuff that I found. And it was nice reminding myself of all the different geologic features that are in my area. And I think if everyone did this, they would be reminded of all the stuff that they can find too. There are many geologic features and processes that are found basically everywhere. Um, but there are also things that are just very specific to the location and the geologic history of that area, which is why this is such an interesting activity to do, um, whether you're a geologist and you already know about this stuff, or if you're just curious and you want to learn about it more in this way. So go ahead and try doing your own scavenger hunt and see how many things you could find in your area. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something and thanks for watching.